We continue our team coverage now with CBS 4's Ted Scout, and he is also live on the scene and joining us more, joining us now with more, and he, of course, is at a different uh, point of that scene. Ted, what can you tell us? Well, Francis, right now I'm around 88th, uh, just to the west of Collins. Right back there uh, is the building. A fire truck is about to come through here in a moment, so we may have to move a little bit. Um, but you can see the balconies right there. You can see all that debris still hanging from the balconies. That's one of the big concerns that fire rescue has, is if they go in there, uh, danger of concrete falling on them. And when you look down, you can see the top of that rubble heap. Uh, this is on the north side of the building. This is the Champlain, one of the Champlain Towers at 88th and Collins. It looks as though it was the northeastern quadrant that collapsed, a partial collapse here. Chopper 4 gives you a better shot to show you that side. Now, as, um, as Brooke was... As Brooke was saying, uh, she spoke to someone. Uh, Nicholas, come over here. This is Nicholas Balboa. Nicholas Balboa was actually. Uh, oops, hang on one second as this ambulance goes by. All right. Okay. Uh, as uh, you you were you were sleeping and you were awoke about the noise, correct? Uh, so I was actually awake. I was on the corner when um, the the building kind of dropped and the plume of dust and debris kind of pushed out. Um, so you know I was I was. Down the street, I started to walk down. Um, there were some other bystanders that had called 911, and emergency vehicles were responding. Um, and so then they were asking us to kind of move back and push away. So um, you ended up getting to the back of the building. I did. Talk so. about that, and then the little boy you found. Okay. Um, so the as they were pushing us back, um, I tried to get a better view, um, kind of of the the building. So I, I walked around the the adjacent building. Um, next to it uh, and then walked along the beach to get a better view of the back side of the building. Um, on the back side of the building was very quiet being that most of the commotion and uh, emergency vehicles were on the main street on Collins. Um, so it was quiet. I was able to hear um, the boy that was pulled from the rubble uh, yelling. Um, as I got closer, I was able to see his hands sticking through the rubble, you know, waving. Um, and as he was yelling, um, I responded to him and I began to climb, you know, the, uh, the debris to try and get to him. I was in flip-flops at the time, <laughs> so it made it a little bit difficult to get up there. But fire rescue eventually got to him. Yeah, so well, um, myself and it was one other individual that was with me um, that heard him. So as we were kind of, um, as we were communicating him, let, letting him know that we were there, um, you know, he was yelling, please don't leave me. So we, we tried to stay with him, and then I used my phone to flash the, the light on, my, on the back side of my phone. Uh, to signal fire and rescue to come over. Um, so we got a police officer to come over. He climbed up um, and he radioed over to, to fire to, to get them to come over and uh, to help get him out. Tell me about the conversation that you had with him, the back and forth with him. Um, so he was just he was just really panicked. Um, you know, he said that his mom was in there with him. Um, you know, his arm was pinned. It, there wasn't really a whole lot of conversation. It was just, like I said, it was just sheer panic. Um, you know, he, his mom, we couldn't hear her, couldn't see her, so we didn't know what status that she was in. Um, he just, you know, please don't leave me. So I, we told him, we're, we're right here. We, we're not going to let you, you know, be by yourself. So fire rescue got over there and they began to, to get him out. How was he when he got out? Uh, he looked to be all right. I mean, thank God. Um, other than just some some scratches and you know probably that'll end up being some bruising. Um, you know he was he was fine for the most part. Are you able to tell was he on a, a like a third, fourth, fifth floor and fell down or? Judging by where he was at in the debris, that he was more to the top of the debris. I would say he was probably on one of the higher levels. So because he was he was very close to the top, literally like he was able to stick his hand out. What was it like at that moment when you all of a sudden just heard this child cry out? Um, I mean, I just my first instinct was was to run over there and to try and help. Um, I know that you know the emergency crews and whatnot. They, you know, being just a regular person, they don't want us to get in the way or for us to get hurt and endanger ourselves because you know the structure of the building is compromised. But it, it was one of those things. I would hope that somebody would come and help me. You know, when you looked at that building, what went through your mind as you were seeing what's in front of you? Uh, so. For me, it was the images of 9 11. Um, you know, me being the age that I was then, um, that was the first thing that came to mind. Seeing the just the, the destruction and everything, it, that was first that, that we had a mini 9 11 kind of situation. A 
Okay, Nicholas, thanks so much. We appreciate you taking the time for us. So just again to give you an idea, Nicholas was actually right nearby and saw when he got closer to the building, saw that child, that ten year old kind of flag him down, raise his arm, let him know that he's trapped up there. He was trapped in a mattress, a child wearing his pajamas, uh, and he was able to get out. The question now is what's the status of his mom? He wasn't able to hear uh, the mom saying anything and doesn't know what happened. He had to leave the area by the time they were uh, trying to find the mother. So we're still waiting uh, to find out the information on that. So, I mean, as you can imagine, throughout the day, we're going to be hearing a lot more stories like this of people who had, you know, quite harrowing experiences. We know that there's been other people who have been gathering in this area who, who are wondering what happened to their loved one. They're not quite sure yet, so they're just waiting to find out. So a lot of people, I'm sure, are going to be in that same boat. Francis? Just a chilling recap from a witness who rescued that 12-year-old boy.